Uh, welcome back everybody. This is Hutch from Hutch High Perf and uh, I got all my engine parts back. So I've been slowly going through with projects that I wanted to get done but I couldn't because uh, the machinist had all my parts. So now everything is back. I'm going to concentrate on a couple different things. I've got um, got to get these two uh, carburetors on here and then I'm going to mess with uh, setting up the linkage. And I'm also going to have to modify an air cleaner to fit it. Uh, if, if this was an Edelbrock, uh, then they would make probably an air cleaner that would fit their setup. But since this is an Offenhauser 360 and it's uh, kind of an older style intake, it's been around for a long time, there's not an air cleaner that I could find on the market that had the exact spacing in between. There was one that um, when you get it apart, you can actually move the, uh, the throttle positions around the in, or the, the carb openings and then lock everything in place. But I didn't like the look of it. And that's uh, what does it matter if you don't like the way it looks? So anyway, I'm going to modify something and make it work. But uh, let, me, uh, let me grab the carburetors and uh, actually let me uh, show you um, my issue with the throttle linkage and my decision on how I was going to set it up. So let me show you that real quick. So as I was saying, this is an Offenhauser 360 intake. Now, I'm going to explain um, dual plane versus single plane. So on a, if this were a dual plane intake, the, uh, the, the two runners on this side would feed out to this runner and then into the two center runners here and out to the outer runner there. Two, uh, the two uh, slots on this side would feed the exact opposite. So it would feed these two and then the two outside ones over here. That would be a dual plane. So it, it uh, and you would actually see it because they call it a dual plane because the floor in here, one side would be higher than the other. One would be deep, one would be a little bit higher. And then that's how they uh, split the, the flow. The problem is, that's not what I have. Like I said, this is an older style. So this is, even though it's, it's split right down the middle. So literally these two carbs feed all four cylinders on this side. Same thing on the other side. The reason that this is considered a single plane is because, here's my light, it's because of the way it's set up on the inside. So I'm taking a flashlight down through this one intake runner. And if I turn the flashlight in this direction, you can see it shines all the way on the other side. It's completely open on the inside. All right, so the linkage, let me grab this. So the linkage that I got, and I got this before I got the intake, I got uh, this from Edelbrock. It is a progressive linkage setup. So basically what happens is the, uh, the throttle cable is hooked to the back carburetor, and as that blade is opened up as you press the gas, there's a delay on the front. So this one opens up at a different increment in a later time period than the, the back one. But by the time you get the wide open throttle, they're both wide open. I can't do that on this because of the way that the cylinders are fed. And it's, uh, I think it would create havoc on the system if I did it this way because it's completely open. And so the, the back carburetor, if this comes on first, these back two cylinders are going to get plenty of gas. But these front two cylinders may run lean because of that because this one is coming on later. So unless you were running an air fuel ratio monitor and actually had a sensor on each one of the cylinders, you would never pick that up on an air fuel ratio uh, because you could, be, you could be fat or happy back here and lean up here, but they're all dumping down into one spot where the sensor's at. Even if you had two sensors side to side, you still might miss the fact that these two uh, cylinders are lean uh, compared to those. So I'm going to go with a one-to-one -one linkage, and I'm going to put the carbs on and set it up, and I'll show you what that looks like. All 
All right, so here's what I'm talking about on a progressive linkage. You've got uh, this back throttle that is basically running off your, your throttle cable. So this is the first thing that moves. And you can see that. So you're going to have, you'd have to have springs on both of these to hold the throttles closed. So as, as you get on the gas, and this, is, this isn't quite as, as good as if it was like in, and this is made, this is made by Edelbrock, made for Edelbrock, and the carbs, the, the spacing is different on this. So even if I tried to use it, it's, there's not a lot of room to, to make the adjustments that you have to. So anyway, so I'm going to use my thumb as the spring on the front. So then as this back carb comes on, you've got, there'd be more of that if the carbs were spaced different because there'd be, there'd be more of this shaft to be able to move. I've got it, as you can see, there's so much thread on both sides. I've got this thing literally as out as far as it'll go. So as you hit the throttle, it comes on and then this spacer is your progressive movement in the middle of the two of them. So as this throttle comes on, the spacer hits the end of this bar and then that brings both of them on. And then what you would do is at this end, full throttle here, you would make your adjustment. You can see there's a little bit more adjustment room. But the problem is these are spaced so close together because there's just not enough room. I'd have to, I'd have to make a, a new shaft to, to be able to do it if I was gonna use it. Uh, so there would be some more leeway between this because look, that's full open throttle and it's all the way over here. So if it stayed like that, it would just the whole time, like I'd have to, I'd have to move this around. I'd have to move this collar all the way up to this to get full throttle and it would be just like one to one. So since this is a single plane, I'm using a one to one linkage anyway. So let me show you what I did. All right. So I just went out to the hardware store and bought some round stock and I basically just tapped and drilled the ends on both sides and then uh, ran a tap down it so it would fit the thread and now I can thread this on so now with the rod in place just one to one. Then I hook my throttle cable up here. And that's how we're going to run it. All right. Now, now that that is solved, I need to work on the air cleaner. So uh, that's going to be a fun project all in itself because I got to modify it to make it fit these two carburetors. So it's going to be interesting. So let me show you what I'm talking about with the air cleaner. So I made this template that fits right on to both carbs, proper spacing. And then <laughs> you have that. I have to make that fit on. I bought two of these. I had to. Uh, so I got to make that fit onto this. So here's my thinking. Here is my base, that inside lip, because I don't want to. I don't want to cut on this outside and have to deal with uh, with welding that lip. So that is the inside, and that's where the center uh, carb opening is. So what I need to do, I should have mapped this out. So what I'm going to end up doing is cutting this. I don't know, maybe like a like a quarter or half an inch away from this lip, cut the whole thing out all the way around. And then I'm going to cut out for both of them a piece that big, right? So it'll just, just come out to that portion. And if I cut that, two of those, and then I flip them around, I believe they will both fit in there like so weld them back in place just like that and then this actually comes right to the center another one over here and that should make my dual car base that's the thought anyway so that's what we're going for so let me 
let me show you what I'm going to, what I'm thinking of doing to, to try to get that done. So I have a large spool of this red pen stripe that I specifically got for my billet SS3 wheels to pen stripe the outer lip like I did the prototype so it looks like a factory wheel. And this spacing actually may work out perfect. So I think I'm going to lay pen stripe down right at the edge of that lip all the way around. And then that is going to give me my spacing. So when I come in with my grinder, I can cut right on that line. And uh, it'll be nice and clear for me because it's going to be bright red and it should show up. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Well, there you go. I think that is going to give me a nice visible line. I can trim that out. And I got to do this twice. So uh, let me get set up. I guess I'll get to cutting. One done. <laughs> still got one more to do, but still, it's not bad. And it really helped out. Um, it melted it as it got a little hot in some spots, but that really did the trick. It really gave me a nice visible line to be able to stick to. Um, and then it really helped when I was um, cutting the corners up there to, to get that, that round circle. So that's not bad. That's not bad. And then I've got my main piece. And like I said, I think if, if I get that spacing just right and then cut that, it should fit on there okay. That's the plan. Well, one more. Okay, so now both sides are cut out. And I went ahead and took the two best sides finish-wise, and I cut the other side about in the center between the two. So they butt up nice and smooth. Got them held in place with some magnets. Got my ground strap on. I'm gonna break out the big metal glue gun. Any day you can weld is kind of a good day. So anyway, let's get to it. I'm gonna tack these pieces in place and then I will put up the base and then mark because I'm gonna to have, to, to have to trim some more off of here to be able to make it fit and have it flush all the way around. So, but let's get the center tacked up first and then we'll move on. There we go. All right. Yeah. Nice penetration on the back. All right. And like I said, um, it's, it's cut and all I have to do is put the base on and then I got to mark the edges out. But it's perfect because it's not it's not jammed on there, so there's plenty of room. This thing can move around. That's what I wanted. Let's grab the base. Now, here's where it gets a bit artistic because I've got to figure out how to mark that. That's about right. Oh, there it is. 
last line scribed. Just got to do that on both sides. Two more curved freehand cuts with my cutoff wheel and I'm ready to weld this thing together. So wish me luck. Got it cut out. Got it all tacked together. I think it turned out rather well. I got a bunch of welding to do, but it's the basic shape. It's nice and firm. Most of all, most important, it fits. And it's got a little bit of wiggle room, so it's not binding anywhere. It's not doing anything crazy. And I don't know if I said this before, I think I have, but I'm kind of a sucker for a good decal, especially like something that looks factory. I love it. Anyway, I had this custom made, and this way it'll at least look somewhat stock as it goes on the car, as it sits. I think, <laughs> I think that looks fantastic. All right, a little glamour shot. I love the way this thing turned out. It looks very good. I'm really happy. Anyway, that is it for tonight. Appreciate you guys coming back and watching. Do me a favor, there's a subscribe button down there. If you're not already a subscriber, take this opportunity to give me a subscribe. Give me a like. Let's hear some comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. And um, if you don't mind, right at the end here, you're going to see a link for my t-shirt shop. All the profits go right back into the project here. So if you see something you like, every little bit helps. All right, well, this is Hutch from Hutch High Perf, and I'm signing out. Have a good one, guys.